I've been really looking forward to making today's video because today I get to play with googly eyes. You know what? That was a really, really bad idea. My God, they're actually everywhere. Anyway, uh, I'm Anthony at Chaos Rogue Designs. Hello. Uh, today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make uh, rivets and screws uh, with EVA foam and googly eyes as well. Uh, these things I'm going to show you, uh, well, honestly, the googly eye thing is like, it's basically a meme at this point. Uh, but I'll be showing you how to make rivets and screws with googly eyes, with foam, and with my personal favorite foam clay as well. Anyway, um, I need to clean this room up a little bit, so uh, let's get on with it. The first method is almost a meme at this point, but yes, the humble googly eye. Now these are awesome for imitating a rivet or smooth screw head. You can get a lot of them for relatively cheap, and they are so good because they have a nice domed surface and the edges are curved as well. There really isn't a better way to get this shape, and you can get these in loads of different sizes as well, and if that wasn't enough, they are rigid and durable to boot as well. As for painting them, uh, the surface is really smooth, which means paint will not necessarily stick to the surface all that much. Admittedly, I've not had too many problems with this, but it's easy to prime them first with a spray primer or even Mod Podge before applying paint if you do run into problems. Just one quick tip, if you're spraying them, these are so light you're going to blow them all over the place with the air from a spray can. Uh, so stick them to the sticky side of some tape first and then secure that tape to whatever surface you're going to be painting on. Once they're primed, you can paint them in any colour you want. You can add a bit of weathering to dirty them up. I mean, there really is a myriad of reasons why these are so popular for cosplayers and prop makers. Uh, just make sure you remove the sticky back layer of the googly eye before you uh, sort of stick them to your prop. Uh, otherwise, they are still quite prone to falling off. Now, I didn't just make this whole video to tell you to paint some googly eyes, even though that is pretty fun. I'm going to show you a method that you can use with standard foam, and then I'm also going to be showing you a method that you can use with uh, foam clay as well. Um, with the foam clay especially, you can do some really detailed stuff if you want to add some spice. As good as the googly eye method is, there are still some things that you can't do with them. If you're looking for a screw head with sharper edges, or if you just want them to have more height and volume, you can actually end up making them out of foam instead. Now, one set of tools I use a ton, and one I really recommend adding to your arsenal is just some tubing. You can buy packs of metal tubing offcuts on eBay. Now, even a quick look just now, uh, there's one that sold 200 plus um, packs for 6.99, and these honestly look very similar to what I have. With these, you can essentially use them like hole punches and press through the foam to give whatever size screw or rivet you want. Bear in mind, higher density foam can be quite tough to press through, so just make sure you twist the tube as you go and also just make sure you take your time. You can even use plastic tube to do this, um, although if you do decide to go down that route, you're going to need to get creative as that tube will probably need sharpening first. Now, when I was making a bunch of rivets this way, I ended up using one of my knife handles. I ended up just pushing the pipe into the end of it, a bit like this. Uh, with the tool like this, I could use a lot more force and it was an awful lot easier. Oh, uh, one cool thing with this, and it's nothing to do with making rivets, but you can also use this same method to remove round shapes from foam, which is really useful sometimes. Alright, now of course I saved the best for last. Now finally we're at my favourite method. And this is one you can use to make some really smart screw heads. Now, I'm going to be using this stuff. This is foam clay. Uh, now this material is pretty inexpensive, surprisingly, for how much you get. Um, it comes in this sort of wet form. Uh, it feels a little bit like spongy clay. Now, when it dries in the air for a few hours, it hardens up and closely resembles EVA foam that we're used to working with. I have seen a few complaints from people online struggling to keep this stuff smooth. Now, foam clay dries in open air and heat. You need to keep this stuff sealed at all times when you aren't using it. Now, we've bought foam clay from a couple of places and both have the clay in a bag inside a plastic bucket. 
So when you're kind of opening and closing the container, just take your time to push any air out and seal that bag before you put the lid back on. I have seen some methods online on how to get lumpy foam to become soft again, but I can't really comment on them as I've not really had that issue. Now this stuff is awesome because all of a sudden we have control over absolutely everything. What you're going to want to do is roll out some of the clay, a little bit like pastry I guess, until it's the thickness that you want. Now you can use some tubing like I mentioned earlier, but honestly anything round will do, and just press. It is effortless to push through this material, and if what you pressed out is a little bit too thick or thin, just press it back into the clay and try again. Now if you've pressed a tube through, the shape you've made will have nice rounded edges and from here you can score the surface or add anything on top that you want. Now I usually score in a line across the top with a metal ruler or a knife, but you can even use something like an allen key or a screwdriver uh, to make very distinct and quite mechanical looking uh, sort of indentations. The only thing I will say with the foam clay is it takes a few hours to dry enough to pick them up but it does take a fair bit longer for them to actually be hardened 100%. You can leave foam clay in an airing cupboard to speed up the process if needs be, uh, but I think this wait time is a small price to pay for the results. Honestly, I think that covers more or less anything today. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something useful. Uh, if you've made it this far through the video, I presume you did like it. So please, uh, please like the video and subscribe if you're new around here for more awesome prop making and cosplay content. But until next time, take it easy.